morning, everyone. It's Thursday, November 7th, and welcome to CVHP News. I'm Sonora Scott. First up, here's a look at what we're working on at KLST and KSAN. TxDOT is holding a ceremony to bring awareness to their In the Streak campaign. We'll share that story with you tonight. And we heard from event organizers yesterday. The Red, White, and You hiring event is happening today at the McNeese Convention Center from 10 until 2 o'clock. Now to a story that's all about girl power. The Girl Scouts have a new STEM mobile that brings science, technology, engineering, and mathematics opportunities to girls. We caught up with the traveling team to find out more. With this van, we will be able to reach more girls in more places and be able to give them access to STEM programming. Um, the idea is to just kind of bridge the gap that these girls have <coughs> as far as their access goes. So we figured if we could take it to them, then they can still get the experience. The van will be traveling all across the Lone Star State. And Christmas is closer than you may think, but for some seniors in our area, that can be a difficult time. Our Amanda Lozano has details on how you can help. And like this one says Sarah, she wants a robe and a full-size blanket. They're very minimalistic, basic items that you and I take for granted probably, um, but that makes them very happy. And we want to be sure that all of our seniors have a gift to unwrap on Christmas Day. This year's Christmas tree for Meals for the Elderly, seniors still believe is now on display at Sunset Mall. The tree holds ornaments with seniors' Christmas wish lists and stocking stuffers. This is a stocking stuffer, so what that is is you can just buy additional candy or stamps or air fresheners, things like that. Right, just a broad spectrum of items that our seniors always need and want um, so that we can add that to these gifts if we need to. So if you don't want to buy for a specific person, you can always buy a a little bit more broader item. Blankets and heaters are among some of the items that would make a senior's Christmas. Blankets are a big thing. We're in short supply of heaters right now. We just gave out our last five last week, so um, we're really pushing to get some heaters in for our recipients. Even though it's not generally a cold winter, you know, the evenings do drop down. Heaters, blankets, house slippers, um, robes, anything of that nature. For 10 years now, Meals for the Elderly has organized the Seniors Still Believe gift program over the holidays. So they get very excited, and a lot of our seniors and re um, recipients don't have anybody that lives here. <clears throat> they don't have family members. Um, our volunteers are the only human contact they'll have throughout the day. So you can only imagine when Christmas comes around and nobody is there to buy them presents. And um, that's the gift that they're going to receive that year. They're very, they're very excited. Those who want to help can pick up ornaments off the tree near K Jewelers at the mall and can drop off presents that are not wrapped with the ornaments that have the details on who they're for at Meals for the Elderly, Johnson's Funeral Home, and Barbed Wire and Roses by December 6. For ContraValleyHomepage.com, I'm Amanda Lozano. Thanks, Amanda. Now let's check in with meteorologist Jay Martin, who's got a look at our weather. What's going on, Jay? Well, this morning we had the rain chances that are coming through. We're continuing to see rain chances for the rest of today. It'll start to clear out for the evening, though. The biggest thing you want to take away is seeing that 64 was the warmest we saw this morning. So what that means is we're going to see temperatures continue to drop throughout the entire day. So right now we're going to see temperatures getting into the mid 30s by the evening and overnight for your Friday morning. A chilly start and cloudy as well. We're going to continue to see cloudy and cold for your Friday. So plan accordingly. Not a fun way to end the week, but it's just got to get through this Thursday because for Veterans Day weekend, it's not too bad. We're going to see some 70s, some plenty of sunshine starting to break through all of those clouds as well. Not too bad, but you just got to get through this rainy Thursday and all the cold temperatures that that cold front is bringing us. And welcome back. We're back now with Dennis, our special guest. Dennis, tell the people why you're here. Well, I'm Chaplain Dennis with the Tom Green County Jail, and we're getting ready to do a fundraiser uh, tomorrow from 11 to 1 in mm -hmm. the uh, Sheriff's uh, Office parking lot. Yeah, so this is for, it's a fundraiser for the ministry. That's correct. Definitely. And so um, tell me about the ministry and um, when you got started in it. Well, I started about 17 years ago mm -hmm. uh, in the ministry. Started out as a volunteer, just going in, doing Bible studies, and um, then I was on the board of directors for a while, and I've been the chaplain for about 13 years, uh, enjoying it, get to go in every day and visit with the uh, uh, men. We also have a female chaplain, so she visits with the female inmates, but we get to take them Bibles, do counseling with them, uh, Bible studies with them. Yeah, that's amazing. All within inside the jail. 
all within the jail. That's amazing. We're one of the largest jail ministries in a county facility wow. in the state of Texas. Wow. So tell me, um, I guess, give me an I- ideal day, a, a typical day. You you get your supplies, you go in, what happens? Well, my office is at the sheriff's office. Mm-hmm. I pick up all my Bibles and Bible studies and I walk across to the jail. Um, I just make my rounds. I get to see everybody in the jail twice a week. Uh, some on Mondays and Wednesdays, some on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and uh, just visit with them. I know mm-hmm. a lot of them are going through tough times, so we try to encourage them, uh, get them uh, grounded while they're here, um, do whatever we can. Um, I also spend a lot of time on the phone or with family members uh, doing some counseling and helping them get through this and cope with this. And then um, even after they leave here and go to um uh, prison, we, we try to stay in touch with them and check on them, make sure they're doing well, get them plugged back into the community when they come back in. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, you know, the families, because it's not just the person who is in jail at the time, you know, it's, it affects their families as well. That's correct. And um, we, we, we see that with um, all different families. Um, we, I spend a lot of time with moms and dads, mm-hmm. and I even get calls from uh, parents that are in other states, oh. and they'll say, hey, my uh, son is incarcerated right now. Can you stop by and visit with him? Uh, I had a family, uh, the dad and the son were um, at odds for years, and um, just a few months ago, the dad called and wanted me to give his son a purpose-driven life, and so I did, and we started talking, and then they started talking, and they haven't talked in years. Wow. So. It's amazing how the ministry can kind of pull these families together. Definitely. And um, for those who may be thinking, you know, why? Why people in jail? You know, what what do you tell them? Well, uh, I believe that we all make mistakes, and it's only by the grace of God that we're not all in there. But um, I believe that uh, they we should all get a second chance. Um, some it takes a little bit longer but uh, we have some great success stories of how we've brought families back together and uh, just uh, worked with these men as they as they go through these uh, tough challenges Mm -hmm. and and just show them that you know God has a different life for them yeah you shared one of those stories is there another success story that comes to your mind Uh, there's a guy that we were I worked with for um, several years he was a 19 year meth addict his wife was tired of the drug scene divorced him they had a six-year-old son She said, I'm done. So I worked with him while he was here. Um, He went to prison for 10 years, worked with him there. When he got back, um, I I remember sitting on his couch after I got him an apartment, got him plugged in. And I said, do you ever want to be a part of your son again? And he said, I do, but I want to make sure that I am grounded. Mm -hmm. So um, after like a year and a half, he started talking with his wife and um, they started, she saw that he was different. Um, She wasn't going to jump into anything. And when she saw that he was different, she allowed him back into uh, their life. His son was now 16. uh, And then about a year and a half ago, they remarried and uh, bought a house here. And they're doing really, really well. So wow. that's just a few of our success stories. That's yeah, that's amazing. Um, is there, you know, for those people who, I'm sure you get some pushback sometimes, like, oh, they'll never change. You know, what do you what do you tell them? We do. We get that a lot. Um, you know, th- these guys have been doing this for 20, 30 years, destroying their families and everything. And um, you know, it's just one of those things that I, I constantly tell them: don't give up. Don't give up on these people. You you never know how God's going to be able to get a hold of these people and change their life. You continue to pray, um, you know, and see what God has for them. And uh, a lot of times I'll get calls saying, hey, thank you for what you've done for my son. And, you know, he's uh, back with his wife. Um, you know, uh, he's a part of his uh, children's life and all of that. Another program that we have to um, bring these families back together as well is a thing that um, we're getting ready to... Uh, gear up for now it's called christmas hope and it's a uh, it's a program where we supply christmas gifts to the inmates children and uh, last year we started also taking um food boxes as well because a lot of these people their grandparents are raising them yeah um they don't have money uh, for Christmas. And I remember one time I, I took my wife with me, uh, one time we were delivering gifts and, uh, we went to this, uh, grandmother's house and she had probably six or eight kids. And she said, I had no idea how I was going to provide Christmas for oh, these wow. families. So yeah. makes a difference. It does. It does. So if people want to get involved with that, how, how can they help? 
They can um, call the sheriff's office and okay. ask for jail ministry, or they could call our office direct. It's 486-0868, okay. or they can call me on my cell phone direct, which is 325-212-9577. Perfect. Now, um, this event uh, is coming up uh, tomorrow. It's tomorrow, isn't tomorrow. it? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about this event a little bit. Okay. We, um, this is our third year. Uh, mm -hmm. We've done, we did brisket the first year, uh, pulled pork sandwiches last year. We're going back to brisket this year. For $10, you can come by and get a brisket plate with uh, beans, potato salad, bread, and water. Um, and you don't even have to get out of your car. We're going to make it easy for you. <laughs> you can just drive, drive up. on through. <laughs> yes. Show us your ticket. If you didn't get a ticket, we will take walk-ins. You just come on in and uh, we'll provide that. It's from 11 to 1 at the sheriff's office parking lot. Perfect. Now, um, is this how you get a majority of your funding for and, and what do you use that funding for? That's a good question. Um, we are not funded by any um, state organization. We are solely by um, donations mm -hmm. and it's through churches, uh, individuals. Even one year we had Blaine's Pub uh, really? donate some money <laughs> to us. So, um, But uh, this is one of our greatest, our, our largest fundraisers through the year and it, we uh, purchase Bibles uh, with this, each ticket will purchase two Bibles uh, to go into the jail, and we take about between 120 and 150 Bibles every month wow. into the jail. So it can be costly, mm -hmm. but um, it's worth the cost. Definitely. Well, that's that's amazing. Thank you so much for for joining us today. Is there any final message you want to share? Come on out and see us <laughs> if you have any questions. Um, if you'd like to be a part of the ministry, we'd love for you to just come on out. We'll tell yeah. you uh, what you can do to get plugged in. And um, the, the ministry is made up of 45 different churches throughout San Angelo. So Wow. Um, and there's take, the, the male and the female ministry. Yes. We have uh, males teach males and females teach females. We also have a pen pal program. If you're interested, contact us. Wow. Wow. A lot of, a lot of good stuff going on. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. So just give Dennis a call and he'll answer all your questions. All right. Thank you. Wonderful. We're going to put all his information on our website and here's what else you can find on our website, ConchaValleyHomePage.com. You can find out more about the Girl Scout Mobile that we talked about earlier. You can see the latest edition of Our Water with Victor Glenn and read more about the issues going on on the Texas-Mexico border. Well, thank you so much for joining us for CVHP News. Don't forget to follow us on social media and download our free app. Just search Contra Valley homepage in your app store and we will also want to hear from you what do you want to see on the show you can send us a message on social media or give us a call well that's all for right now but hey we'll see you right back here tomorrow